привет вам.
Well, hey everyone, thanks for checking us out today here at Harbor Church. My name is Jordan, I'm the worship pastor. We are so glad you are here with us. Listen, we got a great service in store for you. Pastor Joel and Julie are gonna bring an awesome message as we kick off our new series called The Invitation. But before we do that, let's get our hearts right and enter into a time of worship. the power of sin in darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. With truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory The King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place sing for all that you've done for me it worthy is a lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is a lamb who was slain
Well, again, thank you for joining us today here at Harbor Church Online. If this is your first time, we just want to say welcome home. We are so glad that you are here. If you wouldn't mind filling out the Connect card found in the event description of this video, that'll let us get to know you a little bit better, know your story, how we can be praying for you. And also, we want to send you a free gift in the mail just to say thanks for being here with us today. Hey, man, check it out. We got something planned for you that's really awesome coming up. November 1st is Man Day at Central Square Park at 12 p.m. Now that park is right across Harlan Street in the new downtown Westminster area. That's where we had our Easter egg hunt last year. But Man Day, we are playing flag football. We're gonna have Coca Pelli pizza there, so food will be provided for you. And this is really an all ages event. So men, fathers, feel free to bring your sons, students, bring some friends from school. It's gonna be an awesome time as we just hang out, eat some good food, and play some flag football. Again, Man Day, November 1st. 12 p.m. Central Square Park. We'll see you there. Hey, we just want to take a second right now and thank you for your faithfulness. Your guys' generosity have allowed us to continue our ministry at Harbor Church to make Jesus tangible here in our community, but also all over the world. So if that's you, man, we want to thank you. If you would like to partner with Harbor Church right now to support the mission and vision of everything we're doing as we strive to make Jesus tangible in every area of our lives, you can do so a few ways. First, you can give online at harborchurch.life slash give. You can also mail a physical check to the address here at the church shown on the screen right now, or you can text a dollar amount to 843 Two, one. Again, thank you for your faithfulness, your generosity during this season so that we can continue to make Jesus tangible. Let me pray for us and we'll go back into the time of worship. Lord, we just come before you right now. We offer our offering of praise, of thanksgiving, of gratefulness for the things that you have done in our lives. Thank you for being present and real every single day for us. God, we turn our attention, our affection to you right now. Hear us, be near to us. Rest here with us in this moment. We love you, we're thankful for who you are and what you've done for us. It's in your name we pray. It's all because. 
because of you, Jesus, it's all because of your love and my soul. Hey, Harbor Church family, my name is Joel Thomas, and I'm the lead pastor, and this is my wife, Julie. Hi. 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 And we're so glad you guys are with us today. I tell you what, we are kicking off a new series. We are titling it The Invitation. For the next six weeks, we're going to dive into this idea of the invitation that God invites us to pray. And when I think about the idea of an invitation, I'm reminded really of a story from several years ago. We were living in Phoenix, and it was one of those times where life was just crazy. I was a pastor, a lot of plates were spinning, the kids were little, and it was one of those days, I'm wondering if maybe you've ever experienced this, where you just know deep down that God is inviting you to get away with Him. And so for me, living in the desert in Phoenix, that meant I had to get out of the city, right? I had to get to the mountains because there is never a better cathedral. There's never anything better for me than nature to experience and respond to God's invitation. And so in responding to that, I did what any good kind of evangelical church-raised young man is gonna do. I'm gonna grab a devotional and I'm gonna grab my Bible. And so I grabbed both and I headed up to Prescott, Arizona. Shout out to all of you joining us from Prescott, Arizona. So glad to have you with us. And I headed up to Lynx Lake. It is this beautiful lake just nestled among these ponderosa pine trees. And so I found a great spot, right? I get, I get to the edge of the lake and I'm there and, and I did, the, you know, I did what, what I always did. I grabbed the devotional. And so I opened up the devotional. I mean, people have given a lot of thought, a lot of, lot, lot of intentionality to leading me to encounter God, right? So I'm, I'm going through the devotional and I felt so clearly that God said, close it. I just want you. And so it felt a little awkward, right? A little uncomfortable. So I closed the devotional and then, well, then the next thing must be he wants me to be in his word. So I grabbed the Bible and I did what every pastor tells you not to do. I did the thing where like I open it up and just like point and yes, this is the passage. And I read it, and again, so clearly from the Lord going, no, I just want you. And so it was strange, right? I close up, so I don't have the devotion, I don't have the Bible, and and it feels like that little kid for the first time having both the training wheels taken off. And it was so strange, and it felt a little awkward. But the truth that really hit home that day, and there were so many things I learned about God and from God that moment, was that he was just inviting me to be with him in prayer, right? He just wanted me. No programs, no devotionals, not even God's word, the Holy Bible, right? No platforms, no platitudes. Because at the end of the day, prayer is an invitation from God himself. He invites us to talk to him, to stay connected with him, to be involved in his purposes right now. And the deal is, man, when we, when we ignore his invitation, right, we're going to miss out on his love, on his passion, and on the very mission of God himself, both personally and really in the world around us. And so that's the point of this series called The Invitation, is to spend the next six Sundays receiving and accepting the invitation that God has for us to join him in prayer. So I'm inviting you to join us in this next 40 days of prayer. And so we're calling it the invitation. And when, when you think about that word, the invitation, think about getting one in the mail. 
I know for me, when I go to the, the mailbox and I open it up, you, you got a lot of junk mail. You probably got a lot of political ads right now. Oh, man. But when you pull out that pile of mail out of your mailbox and you find an invitation, you pause mm -hmm. and you take a look at it. And for me, I, I look at it. I love getting an invitation to some place. Maybe it's to a wedding. And you'll look at it and maybe there's calligraphy on the front of it. And it's handwritten. And then you'll open it up and, and you bring it out. And there's just a beauty to it, isn't there? To an invitation. I remember when we were getting our invitations together for our own wedding. And, and it was just such, a little while ago. It was just a little while ago. But there's such care that's, that's put into an invitation. There's, there's a specific envelope and, and there's a way to do it. Maybe there's some paper. It's just embossed. It's just gorgeous. Invitations are just beautiful and you love to receive them, right? Because that's just who we are. And there's three things that an invitation implies. An invitation implies three different things. One, it's for you. Yeah. The, the person sending out the invitation made a guest list, and, and you're one of those people. <laughs> it, you, when you're pulling out all that mail, it's not to the current resident of whatever your address is. No, it's, it's for you specifically. Mm -hmm. The second thing an invitation applies is that the person who sent it is going to be ready for you when you arrive. They're not just going to invite you to something and go, psych, <laughs> we're actually not having the event. We were just going to send you an invitation and just punk you. No, they're going to be ready for you when you arrive. They're going to have everything in place. They're, they're going to be there mentally and physically. Uh, and, and this event is going to happen because they've been planning for it. Mm. And the third thing an invitation implies is that it's going to be so worth it. Mm. It's going to be so worth it when you get there. Everything that you've been anticipating about the event, everything that they've been planning for, it's all going to meet at the same time and it's going to be so worth it. And that's what prayer is. Prayer is an invitation from God himself to us, to me, to you specifically. It's not just for the whole wide world, it's to you specifically. Knowing that, that God is going to meet you there, he's going to be there, come what may, and it's going to be so worth it when you go. It's going to be absolutely worth it when you accept his invitation. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be talking about, is about God's invitation to us to pray. And when we think about kind of launching into this idea of, of this word, prayer, it's huge. Mm. There's so much that's been written, so much that's been said about prayer through, throughout time. If you, if you Google it, if you go to Amazon, there's so much that's been written about prayer. And there's a couple things that, that we probably know off the, top, uh, off the top that we know about prayer. Is one, we were made to pray. Yeah. You and I, we were actually made to pray. It doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter if you are a Buddhist, uh, if you are a Muslim, if you are an atheist, it doesn't matter. We are all wired to pray because when, when crisis hits, mm. we pray. That's yeah. what we do because we were created in the image of God. God made us, he created us in his image. And so because of that, he actually put into us this desire to connect with him. We were made to pray. But here's the second thing that I know. Sometimes we don't. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't pray. And there's, there's a lot of reasons why we don't pray. Oh man, there's so many reasons, you know, what keeps us from praying. First one I know for me are just distractions. Right, right. See if this is true for you because it is of me. As soon as that alarm goes off and you go to grab your phone, I'm sure that you're not at a loss for things to think about, right? All the plates that you're spinning, all the things that you're worried about, all the concerns of this world, right? Life is so loud. There's so many things to do, so many things to be, places to go, right? So many of it, obligations. And so many people around us wanting our time, wanting our attention. It's all those distractions, calendars, schedules, schools, and work. One of the reasons, right? It's just loud. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of the reasons we don't pray is because of distractions. Yep. Another reason I think that we don't pray is we just think, I'll do it later. Mm. I'll be scrolling through something and I'll see somebody's going through something. I'm like, oh, I should pray about that later when I pray. Or I get a text, hey, will you pray for me about this? And you think, oh yeah, I'll do that later when I pray. And I just think, well, I'll just do it later. Yeah, that, that's really good. And another one is, I, I think if we're really honest, we're not sure that it works, right? It just doesn't work. Right, God hasn't moved in the way you wanted him to and in the timing that you've mandated for him to move and you're just like, I'm out. I prayed, but it just, just doesn't seem to make any difference. What, am I, what I'm praying for, it's not happening. The way I want it and in the time I want it, so I'm tapping out. It must not be real, so what's the point? Yeah. 
I think another reason why we don't pray is we've just, we're discouraged. We are overwhelmed. Mm. We are overwhelmed with life mm. and with all that's weighing on us and we can feel hopeless and we just feel discouraged mm. about stuff. And so we just don't pray because we're just overwhelmed. Yeah, and then I think the last one, this is true if we're sitting down, we're having mm -hmm. coffee. I know this has been true of me uh, when I was younger, when I was just starting my journey of faith was we just don't know how. Right? I think if we're really honest, it's like it's such a mystery. It's so overwhelming. I, I don't know where to begin. And really that speaks to us just feeling inadequate about ourselves. Well, if that's you, if you just feel like, boy, I'm not even sure how to pray, then I got to tell you, welcome home. You're in good company. You're in the company of the Apostle Paul himself, right? Wrote the majority of the New Testament himself. He says this in Romans 8, 26. He says, we do not know what we ought to pray for. He's like you. He's like me. We don't even know how to. We're also like all the disciples in Luke 11, verse 1, right? The disciples come to Jesus and they go, teach us how to pray. And what's really fascinating about this is that this is the one place where the disciples come to him and really ask this how question. And keep in mind, you've got these 12 guys that have been with Jesus for three and a half years. They have seen him walk on water. They have seen him calm storms. They've seen him do amazing, miraculous things, right? He has, he has multiplied the fishes and the loaves, right? He's, got, he's done supernatural, instantaneous healings of people. People have walked. The, the deaf can hear, the blind can see, the mute can speak, right? Literally, the dead is brought back to life. He's taught amazing truths. But for the disciples, they don't come to him and say, Jesus, teach us how to teach. They don't come to Jesus and say, teach us how to do miracles. After spending three and a half years with Jesus, their one question by observing his life Jesus, teach us how to pray. And the reason that they did that is because they saw something. Mm. They saw something. As they watched Jesus, they, they saw mm. something. When he would get away with the Father, there was something supernatural that happened, and, and they wanted that. Mm. I want what you have, Jesus. I want that connection with God. Teach us how mm. to pray. I want yes. that in you. And so, and so that's why we're embarking on this, on this next, this next journey for 40 days, for the next six weeks. What does it look like for us to pray and to learn more about what it means to pray in our lives? And so today, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about two different things. Number one is why, why in the world does God invite us? Why does God <coughs> invite me to spend time with him? Why does God do that? And the second thing we're gonna talk about is how how do I accept that invitation? Hmm. How do I accept that invitation? And so we're just gonna jump into it. The first one of why does God invite us to pray? Hmm. Why does he do that? Is because number one, God wants me to talk to him about anything. God wants me to talk to him about anything. I think sometimes when we approach prayer, we think I need to be super spiritual. I need to have the right things to say. I need Amen. to have all the words correct. I need to be able to lay it out and, and say things the way that I, I think he wants me to say them, but I'm not sure. I don't think God wants that at all. Mm. I think God wants us to talk to him about anything. Because here's the thing, he created you and he wired you with certain personality traits, with certain talents, with certain giftings, with certain interests. There's a reason why you love football. There's a reason why you love sports. There's a reason why you love to create things or you love to manage things or you love numbers or you love helping people with their money. You love certain things. There's a reason for that. It's because God made you that way. God created all of that in you and he wants to hear what interests you. He wants to hear about what's going on in your life. When my kids uh, were little, they would pile in the car after school and they'd all get in there. We've got four kids. And they'd all pile in the into the car after school and they would just talk to me about everything that happened in their day. They'd talk to me about the crazy things that happened at recess or the tests that they did so great on. And, and I didn't sit and, and go, why aren't you talking to me about world politics? No, that's not what I do. No, I wanna hear what they have to say. I wanna hear what's interesting to them. I wanna hear what they're excited about, what they're happy about, what, what's going on in their world because because I just want to hear what's going on. I want to hear about it all. I want to hear about it all. And I think sometimes we can get discouraged in our prayer life. And I think we can sometimes 
get tired in our prayer life because it just kind of gets boring because I think we try to manufacture what we think God wants us to say to him. We think about what we should be saying in, instead of what actually interests us. And I think that's what God wants us to talk about. What's going on in your job? What happened today at your job? What did you like? What didn't you like? What is going on in that relationship? What is going on that you are compelled by? What drives you? What is irritating the tar out of you right now? God wants to hear that from you. Like I said, we have four kids and, and they all process life very differently. Some are external processors, some are internal processors. And my one, one of my sons is a very internal processor. And I've come to him at different times and said, honey, I love the sound of your voice. I love the sound of your voice and I wanna hear every last thing that you have to say. And I think God does that because he's a good father. In, in Psalm 103, 13, it says, the Lord is like a father to his children he is tender and compassionate to those who reverence him. Mm. And also in 1 John 5, 14 through 15, it says we can be confident in approaching God, knowing that he listens to us whenever we ask him for anything according to his will. And since we know that he hears us when we make our requests, then we can be sure that he will answer us. So the first why, why does God invite us to talk to him? It's because he wants me to talk mm. to him about anything. I love that. About anything, right? He's a good father. We don't have to decide. There's not some things that are spiritual and some things that are unspiritual. Essentially, all of it's spiritual because it's all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's all of us sharing the things that matter to us. And God wants to hear every bit of it. The second right why is that God loves to answer our prayers, mm -hmm. right? He loves to answer our prayers. God invites us to pray because he wants to answer. Why? Because it then reveals his glory and he just loves to do it. He's a good father, right? He invites us to pray because he wants to show up. It reveals, again, more of his glory, more of his power. The supernatural na nature of God is pointed out when he answers prayers. Can you imagine going back to Julie's, right, this, this illustration, this metaphor of an invitation, right? God doesn't invite you in to, to a party only to show up for you and I to show up and to realize it was just a joke, right? Nobody's actually there. As Julie said, God's not looking to punk you. That's not his goal. No, he loves answering prayers. And you go, but Joel, I haven't really gotten the answer. No, the problem we have is that we, we, we mix this up. No, God always answers because he answers. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's, it's later mm -hmm. or wait. But he's always answering because he's a good father and he promises that, right? God promises to answer your prayers. This is his promise to you. Jeremiah 33, verse three in the message says, call to me and I will will answer you. I'll tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own, right? It's because he's a good father with more knowledge, more information than we have. Now, here's the deal though. Again, I gotta, I gotta, re I gotta reiterate this. He is not looking to raise all of us up to be spoiled brats, right? God is not our genie and he's not our vending machine. And so when I say God loves to answer prayers, sometimes the answer he loves to give is no because he knows that's not good for us. Maybe his answer is wait, because it's not right, right now, right? And the, here's the thing, if you're in control of the one who answered prayers, then you're God and he's not. And that's not true. He wants us to trust, but he does love to answer his prayers. Matthew 7, nine through 11, he says, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? And so write the first two whys. Why does God invite us to pray? One, he wants to talk with me, right? He invites us in because he wants to affirm that relationship, right? He wants me to talk to him. And two, he loves to answer prayers. We've got to assume that when we come to him. And what's the last one? The last one, the last why of why God invites us in to pray with him is because God wants to be close to us. Mm -hmm. It's not just a one-way relationship. He doesn't want us to just keep coming to him. No, he wants to move close in to us because that's what a good dad does. Mm -hmm. A good dad sees their son, sees their daughter and moves in mm -hmm. and wants yeah. to be close to them because that's what a good dad does. Yeah. Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you know of a family. Uh, maybe you're a parent and, and your child doesn't talk to you. Maybe for physical reasons, maybe for 
relationship reasons and that ache, that hurt because you so want to move in to that relationship, you so want to be close to your child. You, you want that, you long for that in your relationship and God is the same way he wants to be close to us. Isaiah 30, 18, I love this verse. Isaiah 30, 18, the Lord waits for you to come to him so he can show you his love and compassion. God wants to be close to you because he has things for you. He has love and compassion for you. He has intentional things that he wants to speak Mm. into your lives. He has a plan, he has a purpose. He created you on purpose. All those talents and gifts and and things and passions that you're you're into, God put them there for a reason because he's got things for you Mm. to do. It's like that coach that sees the athlete that's, the talent is just off the charts. And that coach is like, oh, let me pour into that so that I can pull out of you things that are wired into you and let me help you be even the best you that you were created to be. It's that parent that sees that child that maybe has an incredible gift of music. Oh, child, let me pour into you and let me bring out that into yeah. you. Let me get you into music lessons. Let me bring you into, into some different relationships that can grow that in you. Mm. But the only way to do that is for the father to move in and draw that out. And that's how we do that in prayer is we, we move in towards the Father. He moves in towards us so that he can then pull out that in us, the things that we are interested in, the things that we want to be, we desire to be. He wants those as well. And he wants to move in for that. Jeremiah 29, 11, I have good plans for you. He says, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future. God wants to lean into us because he loves us. Mm. He loves you so much. He loves me so much. And he wants to have that relationship with you. So why? Why does God invite us to pray? Because he wants to hear us talk about anything and everything. And he loves to answer our prayers. Mm. And he wants to move in and Mm. have that relationship with us. Oh man, that's so good. So right, those are the whys. Uh, but if you're like me, I, I, okay, so I've got the why, why it matters that we pray. Now we've got to move into the practical. How? So how do we accept that invitation, right? If, if, if God is, if this really is, if prayer is his invitation, right? We made the guest list. We made the cut, right? He's sending it out to us. It's personal. He's preparing this for us, all of that. How do we do that, right? There's a, there's a how to open an envelope, right? You go across, you zip it open, you pull it out. Well, there's a how to accepting the invitation to prayer that God offers each one of us. And it begins with this, with simple and sincere words. Mm. With simple and sincere words. Oh my goodness, Mm. right? We jumble this up. We make it overly complicated. We we think, gosh, I've got to have a degree in theology. I've got to know scripture forward and backwards. God's not going to hear my prayer if I don't use a lot of these and thous. And Mm. if I don't talk about sanctification and and justification, all, all the cations, right? He's just not going to hear me. That's not true. Right, there's one kind of right prayer, there's one kind of best prayer, and it's an honest prayer, right? Simple and sincere words. Jesus says this on his description of prayer in Matthew 6, five through eight. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full. Instead, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret, he will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling on and on like pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. If I had to sum this up, it's this idea, right? Simple and sincere versus longer is not stronger right? Longer is not stronger. And you know who you are out there. I've been guilty of this myself. I've been with people like this. It's like, oh my word. It's right, man, we just need to sit sit down at dinner and we just need to pray a blessing over the food, but it does not need to be long because we just want to eat. And you begin with those people who's like, no, longer is stronger. And they draw it out. No, here's the deal. In the Denver metro area, In-N-Out Burger is coming soon. This is simple and sincere. Praise you, Jesus, that I can have a double-double with animal style fries, right? It is simple, it is sincere, right? That's how we begin the how to engaging with God and receiving his invitation. 
Right, you look at Hebrews 10, 22. It says, let us come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith. And so, yeah, the first way we do this is just simple. What's on your heart? Sincere and being, simple. Being real. Just being real. Just being real in your relationship. Don't we all want that in our relationships anyways? We want mm. our relationships to be real, to be sincere and to be simple. God is the same. Mm. He wants us to come mm. with him with sincere and simple words. And, and I think the second way that we receive that invitation is with a heart of humility. Mm. Just a humble heart. Yeah. A humble heart. Humility acknowledges that he is God. Yeah. I, I mean, he is God and there's a humbleness to coming to him because he is so good. He is such a good father and there's a humbleness to that. When, uh, when the disciples came, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, teach us how to pray, he went into what we've come to know as the Lord's Prayer. And really, if you look at the Lord's Prayer, it's a prayer of humility. That's what it really, really is. The baseline for the Lord's Prayer is a baseline of humility. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. It's acknowledging out of the gate that, that you're holy. Uh, and not, not your will, not, not my will, but yours be done on earth as it is in heaven. I, I need your will. I need your ways, not mine. Uh, give us this day our daily bread. You are my provision. There's, yeah. a, there's a submission to that. There's a, there's a humility going, God, I, I need you. You're my provision today. Uh, there's a lot about forgiveness I'm gonna receive forgiveness, I'm gonna offer forgiveness. That's, that's a place of humility. And, and lead me not in temptation. Help me, to, help me to keep out of trouble. Keep me out of my, uh, the way of my own self and, and keep me protected from, from my enemy. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's a prayer of humility. And I think when we come to God with that prayer of humility, he mm. hears that and yeah. he recognizes that and he leans towards that. Oh man, that's so good. And so write the how. How do we do this? Right? We, we, we begin with simple and sincere words mm -hmm. and we take a posture mm -hmm. as a humble heart before the Lord, the creator of the universe, who is also the lover of our souls, right? Simple, sincere words and a humble heart. Mm -hmm. And so here's the deal, right? We're, we're kicking this off. Today is the day. We're asking you, would you accept and receive this invitation? The invitation, the next 40 days mm -hmm. of prayer. Man, we're gonna, we're gonna trust God in this. And here's what scripture also tells us, is that when we trust God with this, when we, when we receive that incredible invitation to, to a, right, an audience with the Almighty, when we receive that invitation, that literally mountains, yeah. mountains move in our lives, right? The mountains of, of faith, right? God wants to give us more faith. The, the mountains of doubt, the mountains of, maybe it's finances for you. Maybe it's, it's that new job. Maybe it's a relationship you need. Maybe for those of you that are parents, maybe it's that wary, wayward parent. Maybe it's that coworker that's dealing with disease. There are mountains that move when we receive and accept his invitation to prayer. Actually, scripture tells us that if we would do that, we could say to this mountain to leap into the ocean. We could tell it to move and it will move. And so as we do these next six weeks, I wanna encourage you, what is that mountain that you need to bring to God as you accept his invitation to prayer? Because at the end of this series, we're gonna invite you to share that story. We wanna celebrate it, right? We're gonna spend six weeks pulling back this, digging into it, looking at what scripture, what Jesus has to say about prayer. But then on week seven, we're gonna celebrate your stories. And we're gonna give you some instructions here at the end of how to best share those through email, through videos, all of that. But what is that mountain, right? What is that mountain in your life that you're gonna believe God's gonna move because you're gonna receive his invitation to the next 40 days of prayer? Yeah. And in the middle of all that, in the meantime, we're gonna pray. Mm. Harbor Church, we have been called to pray. Yeah. What a crazy season we find ourselves in. Over the next 40 days, mm. what events are gonna happen? <laughs> Not only is there an election, but what is going on in your life? Over the next 40 days, what are the things that God is inviting you to come and talk to him about? Will you accept that invitation? So we're gonna, we're gonna make it very easy mm. because we're gonna provide you just some, some prompts to do that. Yeah. We're gonna provide you uh, daily prompts. We're going to do that on all our different social media platforms. A prayer guide. A prayer guide. Yeah, we're going to have we're going to have daily prompts through through everything on social media, and so follow us there if you haven't already, and you'll see 
on the daily, just different ways that you can be praying specifically for that day. And then also, if you're on our email list, we're gonna send out on Monday mornings, we're gonna send out a, a, daily, a daily prayer guide for you. That way, every single day for the next 40 days, you can pray mm. and bring your stuff to God. Bring your simple and sincere words, your humble heart, whatever it is. And you can use these prompts to kind of encourage yourself to accept that invitation that God has for you. Oh man, I'm looking forward to it. Know that I'm praying for you. Julie is praying for you. The leadership here at Harbor Church is praying for you. Would you be willing to accept this invitation and bring that mountain to Jesus? and ask him to move it, right? Move it in the life of others. Move it in the life of maybe your local community in your neighborhood. Move in the nation, right? Move globally. Oh my word, at any other time in your life, I can't think of one when we have needed to pray as a people more than right now. So many things going on and God is inviting you. He's inviting me. He's inviting my wife. He's inviting our family to accept his invitation to pray. Right, because prayer makes the impossible possible. And when we accept God's invitation to prayer, he tells us, he promises us that mountains move. So we're gonna go to a time of worship. Jordan's gonna lead us in some more worship here today. And would you take this time? One, would you determine in your heart and in your mind, I will accept this invitation. I will join into these 40 days of prayer. What mountain are you bringing to the Lord? and asking him to move. Would you do that? Let me pray for us right now. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you that you model prayer, that you speak of prayer. You show us, we like the disciples are coming to you right now. Show us, teach us how to pray. Oh, for all those who are watching this today, would you give us the courage to step forward, to trust you enough to receive this invitation for the next 40 days, would we present that mountain, whether it's relationships, finances, community strain, right? Uh, conflict in our nation, whatever that is, would we bring that to you as we receive your invitation to pray, knowing that you move mountains when we pray? Would you do that in us and through us? We pray this, we ask this because you've invited us to, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all so much. And God bless. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. So whom shall I? Crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Yeah, whom shall I fear? And I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind the God of angels. Is always by my side, the one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can say. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. So whom shall I fear? Oh, whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me, I know who stands behind the God of always by my side the one who reigns forever he is a friend of mine the god of angel armies is always by my side if nothing formed against me shall stand you hold the whole
Harbor Church family, as I mentioned earlier during the message, we want to hear from you. We want to be able to celebrate the stories of mountains moving in your life, whatever that is, right? A mountain of relationship, a mountain of financial need, job. Maybe there's a mountain of, of that person in your community. Maybe it's just a community need. Maybe it's, man, you're, you're asking God to move a mountain in the nation. Right? We want to hear that story. So we want to hear your story. So there's two ways that you can share your stories with us. One, you can just write it out and email it to hello at harborchurch.life. Write your story for us. Right? Get personal. Tell us what the detail is. Tell us what is that thing that you're asking God to move as you accept and receive his invitation. But also, we'd love to see your videos of this. And so here, right, here's some best practices if you wanna upload a video to us. Take your phone, turn it sideways, right? Landscape, shoot it landscape mode and have that trusted friend, trusted family member. Make sure you're framed pretty tight in the shot for us and make sure it's 60 seconds or less, right? Rehearse it, give it your best shot. Tell us your best story of how you're receiving God's invitation during this 40 days of prayer and the celebration you have at the mountain that God is going to move for you, for your community, for your family, whatever that looks like. Send it all to hello at harborchurch.life and we will celebrate your stories come week seven of the invitation. Thank you guys so much.